on? Tracy here. Like my new setup? All right. Well, typically I don't talk about tech. Believe it or not, I'm actually like a really, really big gadget geek. I love tech so much. So much so I don't know why I don't have another niche dedicated to tech, but I'm going to talk about this one, this one topic mainly because I do not see a lot of black people in the field, let alone black women. And I want to talk to you about getting your part, is it upside down? <laughs> your part 107 FAA pilot license, your drone pilot license. I've always wanted to fly a drone but never had any other time or just things got in the way whether it be a deployment or work um, but when Rona hit I found myself with extra time and money since all of the carnivals got canceled um, so a good friend of mine had actually been flying the drones professionally and had been talking to me for several years about flying drones and it took several years of coaxing and a lot of boredom thanks to coronavirus I went ahead and bought a drone um, back in June of this year and from the moment I hit that launch button on my Mavic 2 Pro, I knew I was going to be hooked. So why did I decide to get my drone pilot license? I personally really love to travel. And I hope that once we are able to roam freely, um, that I would be able to take my drone with me wherever I go and to capture some really, really unique perspectives of the experiences that I get to have, especially as a creative. Um, but one major issue about flying a hobby drone is that you really can't take off in restricted airspaces. For example, you legally cannot fly a drone within five miles in an airport. And there are hundreds of airports all over the United States. You'd be surprised how many places you cannot take off as a hobby pilot. As a matter of fact, you'd cut your drone on, you'd attempt to launch, and your drone will be like, nope, it's not happening. But by having your Part 107 license, you'll be able to take flight in those areas. Um, the FAA currently has relationships with apps that will allow you to take uh, off in those areas with your FAA drone pilot license. And they can actually give you a response within minutes to hours. It's super convenient and it just keeps you out of trouble. Studying about restricted airspaces and temporary flight restrictions also keep me from getting out of trouble because whether or not you're a hobby pilot or you're a part uh, 107 certificated pilot there's still laws that you just may not know about so studying for my part 107 uh, license just really kept me out of trouble um, and gives me like a peace of mind that whenever I take off I know I'm doing the right thing another reason why I decided to get my drone pilot license is that in order to legally make money off your drone work you have to have a license even if let's say you you are flying as a hobbyist and then someone says hey I really like your footage you cannot legally sell that content without a drone pilot license so I decided that I want to make money with my drone um, and so as a creative I hope to use my drone footage but there are opportunities in filmmaking construction photography real estate and even search and rescue and I can't do any of those things without a drone pilot license. I've seen several YouTube videos about this, but people really seem to dislike drones and their pilots. I don't know if it's because they feel like their privacy is being intruded or they're just, you know, it's just the era of the Karens, right? Um, people will come up and ask questions, harass you, or even call the police. Obtaining a Part 107 license establishes credibility that can help you quickly de-escalate these situations. Me personally, I'm all about having the receipts, especially in this era. Pros and cons of having a license. Man. Um, I remember asking my friend, hey, like, Nick, like, what's, what's the biggest difference? And his response was jail versus no jail. Yeah, that's right. When you have an FAA Part 107 license, you can catch yourself in some very, very hot water if you are caught breaking the law and they discovered that you are a drone pilot. Um, I have seen videos and I have read literature on drone pilots breaking the law and judges saying you are not ever allowed to fly a drone, not ever, ever again. 
On one side, it's really great that you have these benefits of having this drone pilot license. But on the other, by not having that drone pilot license, you get to feign ignorance. And sometimes ignorance will keep you from receiving some very, very hefty fines or even getting cuffs put on you. So you have to take it where you can get it. You know, you gotta figure out, hey, is it really, really worth it? Are you gonna be a rebel with this drone? Or do you intend to break the law? Do you intend to push limits? If not, then having a drone pilot license will be completely fine for you. License is not cheap. For example, um, the drone pilot exam cost me $160. Um, it's for two years and you have to renew your drone pilot license um, by taking another recertification exam for guess what? $160. Granted, the exam is a lot easier than the initial one that you took. You still have to cough up $160 every two years to maintain this license. So you have to ask yourself, is it really worth it for me to consider getting a drone pilot license if I'm not going to make any money off of it? Because if that's the case, if coughing up $160 every two years is just not your cup of tea and you're just hemorrhaging money just to have it, it may not be the right thing for you to have. For the FAA Part 107, uh, pilot exam first thing I had to do is make sure that I am qualified to have this certificate it's not a right it's a privilege you have to be at least 16 years old you have to be able to read speak and understand English um, you have to be in a physical and mental capacity to uh, get your drone pilot license and you also have to pass the uh, a TSA background check. If you don't have those things or you cannot obtain those things, you will not be allowed to get this license. And I would hate for you to actually have to, you know, spend $160 only to find out that you're not going to be able to get the license. And I'm not sure if they have a policy, if they will refund you if they discover that you don't pass your background check. Some things that they really, really look for is if you have any histories of DUIs or drug offenses, count on not being able to get this, uh, this uh, pilot license at all. Just forget about it. First had to get set up to take the drone pilot exam. I first had to get an FAA tracking number and you have to get it from what's called the Integrated Airman Certification and Rating Application, IACRA. You have to go to that website and create a profile for an application and they will issue you your FAA tracking number. Once you get that FAA tracking number, then you're actually able to go over to the uh, Knowledge Testing Center site, which I will drop the link below to register to take your exam. Studying for the exam. Everybody's got a different learning style. Um, a lot of people, um, a lot of videos that I watched on YouTube, people were actually able to go on a couple of YouTube channels and watch this, uh, their, their little videos to prepare for the exam and they're able to just absolutely crush it. That is not how I learn, obtain, or retain any type of information. Just doing that, just watching a video, just made me like super anxious. It was just not gonna work for me. So I decided to just go ahead and get an actual study guide or a course material. I went to the uh, Drone Pilot Ground School online. I'll drop the link below. Um, it was really great because I was actually able to download all of the videos and study at my own pace. And I got to keep the content, which was super great um, because you spend a good amount of money and you have friends, you can share that content with them so they can actually get ready for their exam as well. So I went ahead and went with the Drone Pilot Ground School watch the videos, but I also went and purchased the, uh, what they call that book, the Aeronautical Knowledge Handbook. I purchased that because I am a tactile learner, so I liked watching the videos, and I also would go through the, the, the book, um, and they have a whole bunch of sectional charts. They're the same sectional charts that you'll actually end up using when you take the exam, so I liked interacting with it and knowing how it felt. Like, I think uh, sectional chart number 25 is like Dallas Airport, it's like the busiest airport, and they use that chart often. As a matter of fact, um, everything I saw in the drone, drone pod ground school was very similar to the questions that um, that had answered, so it was super helpful. But it was really nice to be able to practice with common um, sectional charts that were actually on the exam. So when I went into the test, I felt very familiar and very comfortable. I got comfortable with, um, you know, picking out my answers from the legend. So most of your most of your questions are, are from your sectional chart or something that's in the legend of that sectional chart. Super helpful. I was very comfortable navigating it and I did just fine. If you're the type of person that is, feels completely okay with just watching some videos, like I said, I'll drop those videos below. Be my guest. I personally just like to touch things and interact with it and practice. I didn't really need a whole month, but I had a whole lot of things going on with between work and my platform and other things that I was doing. I decided to 
space my studying so it's not as stressful. Um, there's a lot of people that can prepare for this exam within a week to 10 days and they do just fine. Once I got my score, which I passed, um, I got my score. They typically tell you that it's gonna take 48 hours for it to update in the IACRA. Um, I drove about two, two and a half hours from the testing center. By the time I got back home and sat in front of my computer, my score is already available and I was able to push that through with my application. They took about, from application to mail, it took about three to four weeks to actually get my card. And that was during the coronavirus period and they said that things were gonna be pretty slow. I still think I got my, my license pretty quickly, so I was pretty excited about that. Owning and flying a drone is a serious investment, whether or not you intend to profit off this or not. It can be a lot of fun, but it's nice to also be able to breathe easier knowing that you're not breaking any laws. Um, and that in the future you can choose to profit off your off your drone footage if you choose to choose to do so. So I hope this video was a lot of help. Uh, please, if you have any questions, hit the comments below. Um, hit the like or subscribe button. I talk about various subjects. I mean, I'm supposed to be talking about carnival, but hey, there's no carnival. Um, hit that like and subscribe. You never know what I'm gonna come up to talk to, come up with to talk about. So uh, I hope this was useful. Um, I'm going to drop those links below. I'm going to drop the Drone Pilot Academy, the, uh, the IECRA links, uh, where to register, all that good jazz. So just um, good luck. If you decide to pick up a drone and fly, welcome to the community. Hit me up. I can't wait to see your footage. Have a good day.